this video, we're going to demonstrate how chapter organizers can set up race events for their chapter. Once you have your chapter defined, you'll be able to go to the Manage button and update different aspects of, of your chapter. If your chapter is going to have like a season where you're going to maintain points across a season, what you would definitely want to do is create what we call a season using the Manage Seasons button. Some chapters don't bother with this. They just run races week, week to week or month to month and, and don't really worry about seasons, in which case uh, you're free not to, not to define a season. Courses are your race locations where you'll actually be uh, racing. It's very much recommended to create courses for your uh, venue that you're going to be racing in. You know, here's a venue that we're going to create you can put a small description of that venue, but really what's going to be the most important part of the venue is the address. Once you put the address in, the system will determine what the GPS coordinates are of that venue. And when you use the iOS app, Racing iOS app, or even the map features here, the GPS coordinates will get you there so you can easily, a racer can use their phone, click on the venue and it will take you to that venue uh, either via Waze or Apple Maps. The next part about your chapter, so I'm going to go back to chapters. For my home chapter, I tend to use the, in the upper right, right by your name is usually your home chapter. Uh, so that's the easiest way to get back to the chapter view. So I've created a venue, I uh, use, uh, or a course, uh, venues is, is the same thing. Managing members, uh, you'll use this panel if you want to update members who have joined, if you want to allow them to also be race administrators, that's how you would go about is through uh, the managing of members. Probably why you're here is, is you want to create a, an event uh, and how to, what are the steps for creating your event. So we'll go through that. So you can go through add event. So what do some of these things mean? Well, you know, what format do you want to run? This is generally the format that you're going to be using for the, the main part of your race. Often what we do at my local races is a fastest three consecutive lap. And then after that, we'll go into brackets. Uh, but we can capture the overall result of brackets uh, no matter what format you choose. So, but the, I'm going to choose fastest three consecutive laps because uh, that'll come in handy for qualifying. You give it a name. There's the name of this event. We're going to start it someday here in the future. At 10 a.m. Uh, you have the, are you going to predefine your heats all in advance, or are you going to start with no heats and define the heats on the fly um, as the race is going on? So on the fly, that's open or, or zippy Q, which means we won't generate any heats to start with. You'll create those in the timing system or via zippy Q. If that schedule type is set to controlled, then heats will be generated uh, based on the number of rounds you select. I'll start off with control scheduling. You can change any of these parameters after the race has been created as well. So we're going to say next. Uh, the next thing is you know more information about this this race. How many rounds or what's my pack count limit going to be? Uh, I'm going to say it's we're going to race ten rounds, for example. Uh, I'll have a season, here's a location, I created a, a location called test venue, uh, and you give a short description. So the, the short description of your event, and that short description will show up on the emails, uh, the short description and itinerary and stuff will show up on emails that you send for this event uh, to pilots. Long descriptions where you'll give more details about your event and the itinerary tends to be, you know, which is going to be your your day, you know, 9 a.m. is going to be, you know, set up. Uh, this is so pilots can know more about what, what type of schedule that we plan on following. You can also describe your, your qualifying format, how many rounds you plan to run, uh, and, and anything else uh, to your race that you want to convey to your pilots. The next screen is about... Uh, which frequencies do you want to utilize in your event? 
Uh, IMD 6C tends to be very popular. Six pilots is a decent number that most fields can support. And that IMD 6C is a really good profile to use. So um, I, that comes highly recommended. If you don't want to use all those channels, you can always disable some of the channels so they aren't utilized. And there's also mechanisms to define a custom profile. Next step is restrictions, which we generally don't use. Uh, and I would just let this default. This panel will probably be going away in the future as we move over to more class-based racing rather than uh, defining aircraft in this or aircraft restrictions in this type. And we have created the race. If you want to update anything about this race, you could, you know, you're in this race, you could say manage, update info. And this is where you can change the name of the race. You can add things to the short and long description, you know, test venue, things like that. The one key thing that you'll want to do after you have reviewed this information is this is your opportunity now to send an email to all of your pilots and to do that uh, you do the update race to get to this panel and you do send notification equals yes and when you hit save here a notification of this event will be sent to all the pilots in your chapter manage race is where you're going to be managing your pilot schedule in this race, we had set this race to be a, a race where as pilots join, they will be added to the schedule. If a pilot looks at your race, they will be able to hit the join button and join the race. You as a chapter organizer can, can force join pilots if you desire. For example, I'll force join a friend of mine, 2Dog RC. That search will populate this screen with Mark 2Dog RC. So you select your pilot that you want to join and you select force join. Now, when I selected join, because this was a controlled a race, it generated a heat, and it's also going to generate all the rounds as well for this race. And it automatically assigned Mark to the first slot here in your race at 5.8 gigahertz. That's race band one. If you want to change what he's on, this is where you can select you know, what channel that that person's on, and, and you join this, your race the same way. Uh, actually, you can just hit the join button. If, if I wanted to join the race, I would just hit the join button here in the race and it, it will come up with this panel here. You select which aircraft you want. I fly my Leventador, so I'll select Leventador. And now it's added me to the race. And we can see that both Mark and I are both added uh, and I'm on race band too. And this is what the, the view that your pilots will see. If you want to delete pilots, you just hit the X here at the pilots. They will be deleted from the race. Let's talk about regenerate race schedule. You generally don't want to be hitting this button. This regenerate race schedule under the covers basically removes and re-adds everybody. If you have results already posted for this race, so the timing and scoring system has already forwarded a race of, uh, up here or rounds have already been run, this will wipe all that data out. Uh, when you select regenerate, race it says hey you know pilots will be assigned in the new rounds make sure you're you're sure about that the demo event. so if we look at load schedule you'll see that it's already created 10 rounds for me with those pilots in each round so as pilots join it's automatically converted them into rounds the other way to get to the manage race button is the gear symbol here by race schedule that will also go into manage race that same panel. So it's just multiple ways to get to the same place. Once a race is completely finished, uh, you could do update scores. And in here, we have a mechanism called add overall results. Now this is new. Uh, say you determine a final order for pilots. What you can do is you can say add overall results and you can it'll add slots for the number of pilots you have and you can select who was in first place, who was in second place, and so on. And it will assign points based on their position. Uh, the points are, you have 10 people, the winner gets 10 points, second place gets nine, third place gets eight, and so on. If once an overall result has been used, been added, that is how scoring will work. If we go back after adding the overall results, 
we can see here the results are no longer showing the fastest three consecutive lap times. It's now going to show these points. If you want to revert back, just delete all the rows for the overall results. So if you delete all the rows, um, now it reverts back to the base for the event to fastest three consecutive laps in my case, um, which face I haven't run uh, that. In the live time video, I'll demonstrate that showing up. That is going to complete managing and running a race in racing.